Cycling shoes have cleats for bolting the foot to the pedal. The cyclist is connected to the bicycle, body and sole. Bike shoes with clip-in cleats are a fairly recent innovation. The first versions appeared in France in the 1980s and were modeled after Alpine ski bindings. Avid cyclists are very attached to their bicycles through special shoes that clip to the pedals. Cycling shoes transfer power from the foot to the pedal more efficiently than ordinary shoes. To start, an overhead press drives cookie-cutter shapes called dies through layers of fabric to punch out shoe parts. They use breathable nylon mesh for these upper pieces and synthetic leather for parts like the shoe toe box. Synthetic leather is rigid, waterproof and lightweight. It takes 18 pieces of fabric to make one cycling shoe. This assembler pieces together the upper mesh parts and stitches on synthetic leather trim. She adds a synthetic leather side with vent holes. It gives the cycling shoe structure. With one half of the cycling shoe now complete, it's ready for the other half. She joins it to the other half at the toe end, using high-density nylon thread. The next part is the heel cup. It's a piece of molded polyurethane that adds strength and form to the back of the cycling shoe. She stitches on trim and joins the heel cup to the rest of the cycling shoe. Next, using super strong Kevlar thread, she sews the toe box and tongue to the cycling shoe assembly. The configuration leaves open areas for mesh vents at the front of the shoe. The shoe upper is now complete and ready for the inner sole. It's made of high density plastic. The employee tacks it to a foot mold using small nails. He sets it aside and places a pair of shoe uppers in hot and rounded clamps to warm them to a pliable state. He stretches each upper around a foot mold with a tacked inner sole. Then it's over to a machine that oozes epoxy, a high strength glue that is impervious to weather extremes. The machine grips and folds the cycling shoe upper to the sole as it applies epoxy to seal them together. The epoxy hardens quickly and a computer-controlled grinder gets rid of the excess. Now a spinning brush applies a different epoxy which will need heat to activate it. At the next station, a worker applies a release agent to a mold. He inserts a piece of carbon fiber, a high-tech composite material. He adds nylon for texture. He flips the upper part of the mold and the two parts come together like a waffle iron. Inside, the layers melt into one and then cool, creating a tough and lightweight outer sole. They punch out vent holes and trim the edges of the sole. They paint designs onto it and add a non-slip clear coat. He glues tough nylon mesh over the vent holes to keep the dirt out. He tapes the cleat mount onto it. It will be more securely installed for the individual cyclist at the bike shop. And after an application of epoxy, it's into the oven. At the same time, he heats the glue-covered outer sole in another oven. The heat activates the epoxy. It's time to join the outer sole and the shoe upper. He carefully aligns them and presses them together. He then sets the shoe on a cradle and hydraulic pushers apply pressure as the glue sets. He presses the foot form that's still inside the shoe onto a sharp post, stabilizing it to pull the shoe off. The next employee installs a cable closure device which acts like a shoelace but doesn't become tangled. She adds a ratchet style plastic buckle. Crafted by hand using high-tech materials, it's taken about an hour to make these cycling shoes, and now they're ready for a spin.